Hi guys, so this is a revival of an old video idea and something that I believe Marnie from Ms. Gold Girl still does. It's something that I stole from her originally. She inspired the video when I did it a few years ago. You seem to enjoy it and I believe she still does them quite regularly now. Uh, so I will link her below. But the general concept is that we are looking back at old favourites. So I think she calls them Where Are They Now? I think she's changed it a few times over the years. I used to call them TBT, Throwback Thursday favourites. But because they're going to be on Fridays, I'm going to call them FBF. Flashback Friday favourites and today we're going to look back at my January favourites from 2015, so five years ago. I thought this would be a fun thing to do every single month since it's my 10th ten, year on YouTube um, and we're kind of trying to dial it back to old school YouTube. It's kind of, I just kind of feel like it fits with the theme. So I have a list on some stationery that was purchased as a gift for me um, that are quite cute, little dogs. And um, this is a list of everything that I said I enjoyed in that video and we're going to run through the list and I'm going to tell you whether or not I still have them, whether I still use these kind of products, whether I still would, if there's a reason that I don't, you get the idea. So number one, Superdrug Clearly Youthful with Texturizing Mask. This is amazing. I remember really enjoying this and this was kind of a long, around the time of the, um, was it called Clean On Me? Is that right? Um, <laughs> lots of people in my house making noises. Before it was very very popular to do the kind of glycolic acid type products they weren't really readily available um it was just the the odd product that promised to do that kind of thing now it's everywhere um but at that time there weren't that there weren't that many and so the glycolic acid retexturizing mask from Superdrug was one of the only ones at that price point I really liked a glycolic acid treatment from Wren at the time and I was trying to find a dupe for that. It was very very similar, it didn't do quite the same job. The Wren one I still, I probably should pick that up because I really loved it at the time and I'm sure it's still good. It was like a, an orange, it was amazing. Um, but like I say there's so many products that do a similar thing now. So I would say the products that I replace that with is the Ordinary AHA 30% BHA 2% Peeling Solution. If you haven't seen me talk about this before, it's basically like, it's a really bizarre liquidy red thing that you put all over your face. It tingles a little bit and it kind of, it's a chemical exfoliator effectively. So it kind of gets rid of all the dead skin and you're left with very, very smooth, um, brighter skin in theory, in theory. Now this is not for everyone. These kind of products are relatively harsh compared to just regular skincare. And so if you've not tried something like this before, definitely try it somewhere, you know, like behind your ear, you know, the, the general advice that you get somewhere that's not visible. Um, and don't put it all over your face straight away. Also, if it tingles to the point where you feel like it shouldn't be tingling this much, take it off straight away. Uh, it's something that I like a tingle. I like to feel like it's working. Uh, that's not for everyone. I enjoy it and I like the the general, what did they call it? Retexturizing. Uh, any product that promises to do that is kind of aces in my book anyway. But I, I'd say that's probably on par price-wise and for how I use it now. Uh, I would still buy the other one, but I, I have a feeling it's not going to be quite as effective as the ones I'm now used to. Montagne Jeunesse Black Seaweed Peel-Off Mask. Definitely the best sachet mask I've ever tried. I remember loving this for a couple of reasons. One of them was it felt, I mean, I don't know if you've tried peel-off masks that are like, they kind of dry and you take them off and it's a bit lacklustre. You kind of, mm, 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 like, what's the point? It's just nothingness. This felt like once you'd taken it off your face, like you'd been slapped in the face. And again, not for everyone, but I enjoyed it. It was really stuck on there. And I don't know, I mean, there was definitely an optimum time to remove it. If you waited a little bit longer, it would soften. Uh, but I liked that when I took it off, it felt like fresh. And I really, really enjoyed it. I wouldn't purchase it now if it was in a single use packet, because I really am trying to avoid that. Small steps. I'm still doing so much bad in terms of um, my footprint, but I think the things that we can avoid, things like single-use face masks, I can definitely avoid those. Sheet masks, all that kind of thing. Using cotton pads, I now use bamboo cotton pads, you know. The tiny little things that are easy to change in your routine, I think it's important to try and make those changes um, because if you can't even make the ones that are easy, then we're never gonna make any big changes in our lives, are we? Um, so that's one of the things that, if I could get it in a tube, which potentially you can, uh, then I probably would buy that again but I haven't picked it up recently because I've only ever seen it in a sachet and I'm trying to avoid that. Um, Superdrug Naturally Radiant Hot Cloth Cleanser. This is my favourite because it's the cheapest. 
I actually have the vitamin vitamin E hot cloth cleanser right now. Someone's in the bathroom, so I can't get to it, but it's right on my bath side. And it's one of my favorite hot cloth cleansers. If you are looking for something affordable, kind of in the Lizzle family, you know, that like creamy thick, you put it on and then you take it off with a hot flannel or a muslin cloth. You can't beat them. The ones that you get from Superdrug, I think they're in the region of five pounds. Um, and they're just, they do what they say on the tin. I don't think you need it to be anything special. The Radiance one is a bit more kind of aftershavey in scent and the Vitamin E one kind of smells like song cream to me. So each to their own. I would have either whichever one was on offer, usually. Uh, and yeah, I still purchase that even now. Absolutely no problem. Body Shop Pink Grapefruit Shower Gel. Exactly like you would imagine for pink grapefruit. Very, very zesty and fresh and energizing and just really, really nice. I think this was probably something that I was given as a gift. or in PR because it's not something that I would necessarily have picked up. Actually, now I can't remember. Was it like the the smoothie one? Because maybe I got it, do you know when, I don't know if they still do, the body shop used to do those things where it was like spend a certain amount of money and you get like 50% off. There is 40% off everything at the moment. How could I resist? The body shop isn't really somewhere that I tend to shop, ever. Um, there would have to be like some major, major deal on. Usually it's only when I'm buying my SPF um, when I'm repurchasing my Skin, De skin Defence SPF, which I know I'm supposed to wear every day, but I don't. I just wear it kind of in the summer months when I know I'm going to be outside. And I know I have pigmentation as well. I'm definitely someone that should be wearing it daily, but I don't. Um, and that's pretty much the only other time that I shop at the body shop. And then maybe if I was trying to put up to get to a certain you know spend to get a discount, then I would probably buy something from the Shea Butter range because I really love that. Or the Hemp Hand and Foot Cream is really nice too. Uh, Victoria's Secret Dreamy Vanilla Body Lotion. This scent is out of this world. I remember purchasing this in the January sales and I did really like it. It reminded me a lot of the Ombre Vanille from um, Laura Mercier. It smells very, very similar to the Laura Mercier Ombre Vanille, which I'm in love with and I've still never repurchased. I was this close to purchasing the, the perfume um, not that long ago and resisted. Which is beautiful. Um, again, I would probably purchase that again, but I got it in the sale and I would want it at a sale price. Now, a similar thing that I recently bought from Victoria's Secret, which is from the pink range that I love. And I got this for, I think, five pounds. And it's supposed to be 15. They did a sale about six months ago or so um, in Victoria's Secret. And it was really weird, just a random, completely bizarre sale. And they had loads of skincare. And I haven't really looked at pink skincare before, but I got a couple of these. I got some scrubs that I really like. Um, and maybe some lotions, I can't remember. But this is really, really nice. It's called Oil Sleep Coconut Oil, Nourishing Body Oil. I put some straight after the bath and it really is gorgeous, smells amazing anyway. Um, but it's really nice like on my legs after shaving. So I've been using that. I still would use Victoria's Secret Body Care. It's kind of where I'm trying to go with that. Also, I've just realized I've put this down here as a, to mention, the Glam Glow Gravity Mod Firming Treatment is the only peel off mask that I have in my possession right now. It is pricey. And when I've talked about it in the past, people have said X, Y, Z is supposed to do a similar thing. I think that what it is about this one that does a similar thing, I know that the um, charcoal, was it called charcoal? Black seaweed peel off mask from Montagne Jeunesse is supposed to be um, like clarifying. Whereas this is more, it's supposed to be like anti-aging, supposed to like promote being all bouncy and collagenettes, you know? Um, and what I like about this that reminds me of that is when you take it off, you still get that same, oh, uh, like immediate refreshed feeling. Um, and when I look in the mirror, I see a difference. And whether that's a temporary difference or not, I see a difference and that is all I'm asking for in a mask. Um, I, I just, I really, really like that. And sometimes I just use it kind of just here because it is pricey and I don't want to waste it all over my face but kind of just in the areas where I feel like I'm getting more fine lines, I'll use it and I just, I love it. It's it's an expensive mask that I have repurchased myself, uh, but I use it sparingly. And when I've used it on my husband, he said he can see and feel the difference as well. And he's not a sucker for these things like I am. Um, right, back to the list. Uh, the Sanctuary Salt Scrub. This is the second one of these I've had. I know I've mentioned it in favorites before because I really, really love it. A hundred percent I would purchase this again and will. Um, I'm thinking of going on another kind of no-buy. We're going to talk about this after New York because I've got a big list of things that I want for um, 
like from New York. I'm gonna, we're gonna talk about it in another video, but I'm thinking of doing like a major, major low buy for the remainder of the year. I know we're already in January, but hear me out. I'm thinking like a, a maximum spend per month, let's say like 25 pounds per month. It's enough to allow me to refresh what I have, maybe buy the new whatever, if you guys say, I really want you to review X, that kind of is in the region of being able to do that, but that'll be my absolute maximum. So if I buy like one expensive thing or a couple of things, do you know, if you guys tried to do something like this before, let me know, but I'm thinking of doing that. So the Sanctuary Salt Scrub would go on my list to purchase, for sure. I'm not using any particular body scrub right now. Um, I did buy, before Christmas, the Sanctuary Salt Scrub Bar. It's like a soap that's got like, it's supposed to have the scrub within the soap. That is terrible. Look out for my empties when I talk about that because I have never tried anything I have disliked as much um, in terms of body care, I don't think, truly. It was really disappointing. Uh, but the salt scrub is still, hands down, my favorite body scrub of all time. Burt's Bees hand cream or almond hand cream. This is really, really thick. And so I kind of put it around my cuticles. I don't use it as an overall hand cream because I'm not, I hate the feeling of it all over my hands. I think again that was something that was either gifted to me or sent to me in PR that I was using and really enjoying at the time. I don't use hand cream. Again, something that I should use. I'm going to be 34 in a matter of weeks. And this is the kind of thing, like I'm very, very diligent about face skincare. I'll take all over my chest, sometimes to my arms as well. Um, occasionally I'll do like a back thing because I'm used to having acne on my chest, my arms and my back as a teenager. And so I still do focus this whole area at skincare. But my hands are really neglected and people always say with SPF and with skincare and things, your hands are the things that show the signs of aging quickest because they're always out there in the sun. Um, and they're like, you know, in the elements. So I really must. If you've got a really nice hand cream, something that absorbs quickly, because I can't, this is why I don't use hand cream. I'm like, when am I not using my hands? I can't, I don't, I, like gloves to bed. I can't do any of those things. Something that absorbs quickly with without the residue. Um, make my, bleh. I couldn't even say the name. Makeup Revolution Radiant Light Highlight Palette. It's so neutral, gives just a little bit of colour but a nice sheen. This is almost, no, it's not It's not as much as my Mary Luminizer by The Balm, but it's, it's definitely more of a pop highlighter than this one. This I just never use. I loved this, and let me tell you a funny story. So this was like, oh man, I just really, really enjoyed it. This was like a dupe for the ambient lighting palette from Hourglass. And I truly enjoyed it as much. I really, really did. Now, since then, I've definitely developed um, a real love for dim light, which is basically, there was one particular shade in the ambient light, in the ambient lighting, did it, was it called that? Radiant light palette from Revolution that was like dim light from um, Hourglass that I used to use the most. And I think what it was, was I just never found a drugstore highlight that was so beautiful. It was just a sheen. I talked your ears off about this at the time. Um, it was just so, so pretty. I wasn't super into the other colours, but I really liked that one colour. And since then, I'm just super, super into the one from Hourglass. And I do think that as I am getting older, I am noticing the difference between the cheaper and the more expensive powders when it comes to how fine they are and how flattering they are in my skin. And um, I don't have that to compare now, but I feel like that is a true factor. Age is a factor when it comes to certain makeup products and whether or not it's worth spending the extra money. Um, now obviously, you know, I've had my issues with Makeup Revolution, which you may or may not know about. There is a video on my channel. If you search them, you will find out what I'm talking about. Um, however, I wouldn't have a problem promoting a product that I still thought was absolutely amazing. And I'm really tempted to go and pick that up because it is still available. I think it's only eight pounds. Um, and I really, really loved it. So let me know if you would be interested in kind of a five years down the line, do I still really love this? And I will go and get it and check it out. Um, but I do have an inkling that the finer hourglass powder now is probably gonna win out purely because I'm five years older, my skin is slightly different, uh, but I really did truly love that. And what I was gonna tell you, I said funny story and then completely missed it. Not really a funny story at all, but um, just to kind of give you a, an indication of like a temperature check of where we used to be at with YouTube. I remember saying that I absolutely loved that and that I didn't use my ambient lighting powder from the palette from Hourglass as much because I really liked the Revolution one. And I had said that it was gifted to me 
for my birthday from my friends as part of like um, a birthday present they'd also purchased me that and I was incredibly grateful it's something I would never have bought for myself and I am still using it now five years later I'm still using it so totally <laughs> money money's worth 100% and I would buy it again but or buy it for the first time but because I had been purchased it as a gift I was told over and over again that I was ungrateful for telling you guys that the cheaper product was better. So just kind of like <laughs> very much a losing battle when you consider that if you said that the more expensive thing was better, there would be a lot of people that would be angry because they want you to be budget beauty. And then if I say that the budget thing is better, then I'm being ungrateful because I was gifted the item. And that is the same for PR. There are a faction of people who think you're being ungrateful if you negatively review something that was sent to you um, as a PR sample, like from brand. And I very much consider my job on YouTube to be, to be completely honest. And so if I really like something or I really don't like something, it shouldn't matter where it came from. It really shouldn't. Price is a factor, but it shouldn't matter where it came from. And so just putting it out there, that's been like tale as old as time. People still, <laughs> it's crazy. Um, CoverGirl Outlast 3-in-1 Foundation. I know that we have this. In fact, I might even have it. Do I, do I, do I? No. Um, there is a Max Factor version of this and I don't like it as much. I feel like it's drier. I don't know why. I don't know why it seems to be different, but it is. Um, and I just prefer this so much. It's just exactly the right kind of texture that I want for winter. Right, I have something else to show you here. So this was, um, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe, Max Factor Face Finity All Day Flawless is the equivalent in the UK to the CoverGirl Outlast. That Outlast foundation was fantastic. I have a list of things that I want to pick up when I'm in New York and if it's still available, mm -hmm, I'm tempted to go and get it. Now, the reason that I, I ran out of that and I started using this one, the reason that I didn't continue to use this one, I've probably used, I'm gonna say less than a quarter, maybe like a fifth. Um, it's because this was too pale. I immediately bought it in the wrong color. The Outlast one was always perfect. Um, and so probably if I got this in the right colour, I would have just continued to use this for a long time. But that was a while ago now. Uh, this is probably past its sell by date and uh, or use by date. And I think I'm going to pick up the Outlast again because I just remember loving it. Uh, and lastly, the Rimmel Lasting Finish Nude Foundation. I really, really like it. So that's an honourable mention. And I remember nothing about this at all. It didn't stick with me. This is something that potentially I only used for that one month, really enjoyed and then moved on. Um, the problem being that I, at the time, was trying tons of foundations for loads of wear and compares. And so I would um, flip between favourites in terms of base products quite frequently. Um, I know that it's something that is always kind of a little bit under scrutiny with YouTubers, whether or not they really truly love a product if they've only used, only mentioned it like a couple of times and then they've moved on to something else. But that is kind of the nature of the beast. You're always trying something new and so you're always looking for something better. If you just found something, if you just kind of found your makeup and you were like, this is great, we're good. It would be pretty dull to watch. After a while, you'd be like, okay, so I know what foundation you're gonna use. Every single fav favorites would be the same. Every get ready with me would be the same. That's not what you want from YouTubers or at least beauty YouTubers. Um, but I think we're going to find some kind of happy middle ground this year. Uh, but yeah, I don't remember really anything about that at all. Um, and then lastly, at the time, I was going through TV favourites as well. So I used to do something called Kai Flicks. If you've been around for a really long time, you may remember. Hi guys, today I'm back with another Netflix video. What did we call it? Kai Flicks. It's been a while. I did them sometimes on this channel, sometimes on my other channel, which is called Diary of a Spendaholic. I will link it below. Um, and basically I would sit and just talk about all the things that I'd been watching on Netflix or Sky or now it would be Amazon Prime um, and what I've been enjoying the most. And so I think I was at this point trying to combine that into my favourites. Is that something you would like me to do moving forward? Let me know, because by the time you see this, I won't have um, filmed my January favourites yet. So have you say. Um, so I'm just going to talk about the things. I'm just going to run through. Uh, Pretty Little Liars. This was, <laughs> this was a good time for TV for me. Pretty Little Liars. Do you remember when Pretty Little Liars was on it? It hadn't finished yet in that terrible way. Pretty Little Liars. The Vampire Diaries. And I hadn't watched the end of The Vampire Diaries yet. I wish I could go back into that video and experience The Vampire Diaries episodes 
from the beginning again. I rewatched that show constantly. It's my most rewatched show. I love it. Love Damon Salvatore. Revenge, again, something that I've rewatched. Scandal, something I've rewatched. Uh, the Comeback, which is with Lisa Kudrow, if you haven't seen it, it was like a really, um, like a cult series. It didn't do very well because basically she's this comeback actress and everyone's really mean to her. And she's talked about it in interviews and basically said that she has been told the reason it didn't do well is that people didn't want to see people being mean to her because everybody loves her. Um, and obviously she realised, she's like, but it's not me. It's this character. And it was very frustrating for her because the show is amazing. It's so funny, but they couldn't quite place where it, how, like, how to feel about it. It's so frustrating to watch because you know how good it is and it should have got so many more series. So I think it got one or two series like 15 years ago. I remember this vividly. I, I remember being either pregnant with Ella or she was just born when it first came out. And um, then it came back. So that would have been 10 years later. And it just got one series. And I just, it's a real shame, but it's one of those things that will live on as like a cult favourite. So if you get the chance to see it, you should. Um, and Arrested Development, which similarly got an extra series when Netflix brought it back. It actually got two or three series, I think. That ended up being not a great idea <laughs> because it should have just been left where it was. Um, but again, a really, really great show that didn't find its audience at the time. Uh, but that's it. That is my Flashback Friday favourite. Please let me know if you enjoyed this. I just did this as one take um, because this felt felt right. Uh, but if you would prefer me to chop this down and make it a shorter, snappier video, then let me know. Um, we can we can work with that for next month. But I think we're going to do this every month. I think it's going to be a fun trip down memory lane. If you would like to suggest a particular year's February favourites for next year, go ahead and leave me a link below. Um, if you want to see specifically if I'm using certain products, then leave me a specific link. But I really do want to go back to a month's favourite at a period of time ago. I mean, it could even be last year, any time from the last 10 years. It's going to be fun. Um, so thank you so much for sticking with me this long. Um, and just for fun, just for fun. If you have watched all the way to the end of this video, let me know how you found me. Let me know the first video of my mine that you watched, if you can remember, or how many years you've been watching, because um, I'm feeling very nostalgic as we hit 2020. I just, I just really, really am. So yeah, thanks for watching. If you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe and I will see you guys next time. Bye.